Hi everybody and welcome back to this very special Hobby Titans stream. Folks, we have some news. First, I did promise Kat was here. Is Kat here? I am here. Kat is here. Uh, Kat's doing producing. She's behind the scenes today. We gave Bridger the night off. But folks, we did get her computer back uh, and it melted again today. So, um, I'm going to be painting Car Carandris, the uh, Phoenix Lord of the Striking Scorpions here today with you guys. Kat's going to be hanging out, um, giving me some pointers maybe as I'm going along here. Yeah. Um, which is exciting. Thank you. And um, we will hopefully get our computer back again uh, in the next couple of days. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, so uh, thank you for bearing with us. And if you're here joining us, um, yeah, we're going to paint up a Phoenix Lord. So there's always that. Uh, we're going to hop on into it. Um, Kat, if we could get, a, get some eyes on this Phoenix Lord. Um, I'm going to talk about who I'm, who I'm painting here exactly. So you guys can see this is not the GW Carandris. Uh, and as you know, I usually love me some GW models. But I will say that the Carandris model is very old. Um, and folks, you guys know I also don't necessarily love uh, mid-90s GW. So this is from uh, W.R. Tell, and you guys have probably seen some of their stuff around. Um, a lot of cool third-party sculpts from them. And as you can see, this, you know, the, of course Striking Scorpions are kind of modeled after, um, visually after a Predator, right? We, we all know that. That's not a secret. Um, and so this guy's got the classic, like, ripping a spinal uh, a skull and a spinal column out pose. Um that we are used to seeing from our friend, the Predator. So, um, you know, what better way to kind of like lean into Striking Scorpions being Predators than, you know, posing him just like it. And he has like a headpiece, right? He has his, yeah, so he has like the normal head. I will say this is kind of one of my big issues with uh, third party, um, uh, 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 Asuriani, yeah. yeah, Eldar. Or Eldar is that actually GW, the Eldar uh, line, actually is like largely bigger heads than this. Um, and the heads on Eldar models, like their helmets are actually like quite big. Like they have like these oversized helmets almost. Um, and so when people make third party sculpts, they usually make the heads like proportionally correct. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually canonically incorrect if you think about it. So. Um, we, you know, we have this guy here with, with the cool little extra headpiece. I was thinking about, um, literally putting in an extra striking scorpion head instead of his head. Um, but it, I don't know. I, I decided, you know what, I got this, this head. This one looks cooler. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'll stick with it. So, um, I've done literally almost nothing of, at this guy, on this guy, except for put him together and prime him. Also, I do have these two pieces. So this is his, his dreads. And here's a giant sword he comes with, which I'm going to be sticking on his side here at the end. I have kept it separate for now. Um, let's get going on this guy. Um, the first thing I'm going to do there is, the first thing I'm going to do is lay down base coat airbrushing on him. Sweet. Yeah. Kat, how are you doing tonight? I mean, great. I mean, other than, you know, being super excited to stream, yeah. and then uh, computer melted. So. Yeah, we we were um, Kat was gonna be on the stream tonight, and we were kind of like uh, right before sh she came. Um, I I got in here and and saw the computer had its death warning up for us that it was oh no you spilled some uh, some Cantor blue <laughs> that it was about to die um, and overheat, which was a bummer. So we went ahead and, um, <laughs> had, well, you know, when Kat got in, we were like, okay, which one of us is p painting Carandros? Which one of us is producing? Kat is, was going to learn to produce tonight anyway, so we were like, you know what? Let's just stick with that. Yeah. I, I think only having to do this and only focusing on this might help. We'll see. It's different. Yeah. But uh, it's cool. I hope uh, everyone enjoys. Now, hey, I should bring something up. Guys, I just literally uh, spilled a bunch of Cantor Blue, and you might be asking yourself, why would you spill Cantor Blue? Uh, striking Scorpions are green. Well, um, as you guys know, I have a Saim Han army. That is my, my kind of custom funky red color that I've made. And I also have uh, Dark Blue um, and, and Lutheran Blue as my, as my secondary colors for this army. So I'm actually going to paint my Striking Scorpions blue. Um, not 
red, uh, or excuse me, not green, which I know is um, not technically correct. Um, but you know what? I want my army to match a little bit, and I, I gave it a lot of thought. I was trying to decide if it would be um, like, you know what, just, just let's just do it. Let's just have green striking scorpions. Um, but in the end, I said, you know what, let's have a blue striking scorpion. We have a blue striking scorpion in the studio. Um, that's actually what the thumbnail for this stream is. And I was sort of like, you know what, I kind of like the looks of this. Let's do blue striking scorpions. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking up pictures of like what actual striking scorpions look like. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I think that would have been really fun, like green and yellow. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you were saying that you, you didn't want it to clash too much with your army. So, you know, I, I was like, okay, cool. I mean, it, it's, it's your stuff. Um, I was just trying to go along with your paint scheme. Um, so I think this will be really interesting. Yeah. Um, hmm, let's see what the sound issue is all about here. Um, let me mute my mic and see if it's something with mine. Yeah. Yeah. We're now uh, talking, talking, talking. It's just me with my mic. Yeah. Um, let us know if there's any uh, feedback issues or anything like that. But thank you for letting us know. Um, I guess we'll wait until, uh, until chat <laughs> catches up with that. But um, yeah. Mine is back. Um, mine's back on now. So we'll, we'll have a look here. We might have to uh, swap mics. Yeah, or we might have yeah. to um, see what's up with the mics here. Um, Kat, why don't we go ahead and do like the close-up view here? At least I can show um, me putting some the next coat on this guy. There he is. Okay. Okay, guys, we are back. Um, let us know if you can hear us and if it is better. We're trying to move around receivers. Yep. Maybe that might be the issue. Let us know, guys. Um, in the meantime, hoping that it is, I'm going to go ahead and get started on my first, uh, on the first part of this guy, which is um, Lutheran Blue. Um, Lutheran Blue is the, uh, where is it? There it goes. Yeah, Lutheran Blue. Oh my gosh, I have paint all over the title. But this is actually the color that I use for my, um, kind of like my highlight for the dark blue parts of my Striking Scorpions. And I decided I'm going to so far um, uh, keep going with this color theme of the dark blue and the, the light blue and bone and red. So this is going to be... Um, this is gonna be the color of this guy, and I'm hoping I like it. Um, I haven't painted any striking scorpions yet for my for my army. I have a unit plus um, this guy here. Here, here coming. There we go. And then he should stay in focus after this step. So here we go. I'm just gonna line him up a little bit gently here with a little bit of Lutheran blue. Everyone is saying he looks like he's putting on a power ballad. Like he has a microphone. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm hoping. I was kind of thinking that too. I'm kind of hoping. Um, so I was thinking that when I was looking at him earlier today when we were uh, seeing him on stream and like looking up at the view. Um, and I was hoping that um, once I could paint it to look like bone, like a bloody recently ripped out skeleton, I'm hoping it looks better um, and doesn't look like a power ballad singer. I kinda, I kinda like it, I kinda yeah. like it honestly. Honestly, I think it'd be really cool. Um, but we do have an actual super chat. Yeah. Uh, from before the stream started. Oh, fun. Uh, so it's from a study break. Uh, and they said, I have 6,000 points worth of space wolves. I also have 6,000 points worth of sprues. Do you have any recommendations what to do with these? Ken, I'm actually going to ask you bases. to go first. Yeah. Um, a couple of different things that I've done with sprues is um, I will make uh, like a, a sort of a goop um, because I like to use uh, hobby cement, which is like the super, super thin 
uh, plastic glue that you like paint on. It comes in like a glass bottle uh, with a little brush and stuff. And what you can actually do with old sprues is cut them up into little bits, throw a bunch in one of those bottles and it ends up melting the plastic in it and turning into like a goo that you can Wait, use. What? You what? can use it to uh, gap fill with it. Um, so I've done that, but <laughs> you know, it ruins, it ruins one of your, your bottles essentially. Um, but thankfully I buy like, I buy them in bulk. Uh, cause I, I use hobby cement on everything. Um, I feel like I kind of missed the first part of this. Like what, what exactly is happening here? So have you, have you ever used hobby cement before? Uh, yeah, um, I have, but, um, I don't, it kind of sounds like you're talking about making your own hobby cement. Yeah, kind of. So <laughs> ha cement is different than plastic glue. I, th I think traditional plastic glue that what we're what we're used to is is thicker. It, you squeeze it out, much similar to how oh. you use super glue. Okay. But hobby cement is very thin, right, 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 very right. watery, and it comes in a glass jar that you yes, paint yes. on. Yeah. 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 Also, um, okay, quick question. I've also used acrylic cement. Is that that's di that's a different thing, right? That's different. That's yeah. Different. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so what? What I've done with hobby cement, and this was actually something that, that uh, Seth came up with and told me to do, um, was take old sprue bits and put it into like a half used bottle of hobby cement. Because after a while of using it, you start to build up plastic, build up in them anyway. Okay. Um, and then you make kind of like a sludge <laughs> because it's melted all the plastic and you can use that to gap fill um, as you're putting your stuff together. But... Um, other than that, we back at uh, back at one of the stores, we had a guy who would actually ask us for our old sprue bits okay. um, because he upcycles everything. Um, would ask for you know empty cans, like broken mice uh, from Bro our computers. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> not actual mice, um, and so yeah. Uh, he would turn them into like scenery and, and bases and, and stuff like that. And like, you know, they make really good scaffolding. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah. like sides of buildings and stuff. Yeah. That or like, yeah. Um, like rebar for like yeah. any suppo like broken cement buildings or something. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's really cool. You get to a point though where you're, you're just kind of like, I've done everything that I want to do with them. And right. then you still have like, you know, maybe five thousand points worth of sprues left. Right. Right. Yeah. So I know people. A, a, a few months back, this this like kind of took YouTube by storm. There was like all these videos about like, what am I supposed to do with my, uh, what am I supposed to do with my sprues? Um, I have all these sprues. GW. Like, you're making plastic waste and all this stuff. Um, and people were like really kind of just on this bandwagon of what to do with sprues and a lot of really cool um, ideas came out of it. So what I would say is um, <clears throat> certainly search YouTube. I'll admit, I'm, I'm kind of like Kat. I, I've used them before, like years ago, to um, like add things to terrain. And every time I've done it, I end up being like finished and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still have a million sprues. Like yeah. you can never keep up with, with what it is that you think you're you know, you're going to use them for. There's, you, you'll still have too many. Um, my understanding is that they were recyclable. I don't know if they are or not. There's a lot of uh, different information about what actually truly gets recycled in different areas and what doesn't. So I really, I really don't know. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I think you can, you can find some cool videos out there. I know, yeah, somebody's talking about the, the person who like melted it down and made a manta, um, which is super cool. Um, uh, so good luck for anyone out there trying to figure out what to do with their sprues. Um, here's what I'll tell you I use sprues for, though. Um, I often will, will, like, throw some colors on them, like, kind of use them as, um, practice for, I don't know, lots of things where I know I need to practice getting paint on plastic. So, um, I've definitely, like, kind of assembled sprues in, like, a 3D blob, almost like a little spiky Christmas ornament type thing. Mm -hmm. 
to just see how like different paints would look with different 3D, uh, like airbrushing, like Zenithal, practicing on that, practicing, I've practiced on those before. Um, so they are plastic, so you know, whatever the end, whatever paint you put on it, that's what it's gonna end up looking like, right, when you put them on your models. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some people do really cool stuff. I've, I've seen, um, they're not called runners for uh, Gundam kits, or, or sorry, they're called runners for Gundam kits, not sprues. Um, but I've seen people use like empty runners and make a whole entire, you know, uh, life size ish, you know, whatever um, robot with them. I, you know, I've, I've seen yeah. some people do really interesting stuff with them, and really, I, I think at that point, you know you're you're just limited by your imagination right you, you can do a lot with it i just think it you know at, at a certain point you're gonna get more you're always gonna get more right yeah <laughs> yeah um good luck anyone and if you guys have ideas please let us know um because yeah we all want to know what to do with all these sprues um let me show you guys where i'm at here with this guy um i've basically already finished the airbrushing which is nice kind of quick so what I'm doing now is recess washing, which I always do right after airbrush wa airbrushing. Um, but I did also block out a little bit of color on him. I'm gonna do his claw in kind of my Simhan red color. Um, so I started by putting the, the first coat of Mephiston red down there. Now I don't have too much shading to do here um, because this model actually took, took the Zenon thong quite well um, when, I, when I airbrushed. So I just have a couple areas I wanna hit this is Drakenoff Nightshade, um, which is always the color I use when, I, uh, when I'm working with my Simhan and have any, any areas where I do have this blue, um, which honestly isn't too many. I've actually Elmer glued, Elmer's glued this guy to this cork, by the way. That's kind of my favorite way to do this. Instead of tacking him? Yeah. That's right. Do you find that it like breaks off cleanly, though? I hope so. <laughs> I, I think my fear would be that it would like pull paint off like off the sides, but I guess you could just throw some. I'm, maybe there'll be pigments some cleanup. On. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I already have his base for him too, and some of that might hide. Um, some of that might be hidden by that. I'm hoping. Um, you guys can see though, like always, recess wash. Um, it really um, puts in. It helps break up like airbrush areas. And um, like his, his little six pack, eight, actually he's kind of has an eight pack, his eight pack here, um, definitely like pops a little bit more after just getting some, um, some, some shading in. Yeah, I, I mean like I, I know that we've just barely started, but like he already looks, you know, like you've done a lot to him. I, I think that helps with airbrushing and different angles and stuff though. Yeah. Airbrushing is like, you know, the 80-20 rule, right? You're just like, 20% of the work you do gets you 80% of the way there. Um, now, we were going to have Kat paint this guy today, and I was going to do all the airbrushing and just hand it over to her um, so that she could kind of work her magic with, br with brush working. Um, but you're getting a little bit of a different approach here today, which is faster, maybe? Maybe the stream will be a lot shorter? I don't know. What do we think, Kat? I don't Tell know. Me maybe anytime. I'll just maybe I'll push you to yeah, uh, I, do more. I like both actually. That's actually both of these are good ideas. Anytime you see me doing something, I guess I guess I'm not going to do anything that you're going to be like, oh my gosh. But um, any thoughts on when you're like, oh, you could also do this? Let me know. Um, <clears throat> I am going to. I do need to find some areas to put some some colors uh, other than blue and red. Uh, including, um, well, we have the red, um, so there'll be some bone. That's a color I use. Of course, there is a bone um, that he's holding in his hand. Um, I'm going to make this also give this a little bit of blood effect, um, which I have off to the side here, because it is a, you know, recently, I'm imagining recently ripped out skull and, sc and spinal column. Oh, so he's just carrying <laughs> it around. It's his comfort skull. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's comfort skull. So wait, if it's his comfort skull, then it's probably um, not recently ripped out. We, <laughs> yeah. We're thinking. Okay, we'll have to. We should. We should. Um, yeah, <laughs> we should ask chat. What do we think? Is this a comfort skull or a uh, 
cover. Yeah, this is a great sculpt. Actually, I'm often skeptical of third party sculpts, um, and I don't mean anything other than than GW. But um, like uh, sometimes um, we've talked about this cat. Like not every model takes paint the same. Like every yeah. brand, this mm -hmm. thing took paint pretty well, actually. Yeah, I, I, it has really good detail. I think it airbrushed really well. Uh, you just started, and uh, yeah, it, it already looks almost done. As far as like tabletop goes, right? Right, there's, right? There's always so much more that you could do to something. But um, other than blue and red, what other color were you thinking of throwing in there? Um, well, there needs to be some black. Um, and it, it's not going to be exactly black. It's like that. It's like Corvus black, right? Like the, you guys know the, the super dark gray. Yeah which I love, one of my favorite colors. Um, the other color is sort of like a bone color that I use a lot on my Saim Han. Um, so yeah, black, I don't know, kind of like a red, white, and blue variation, which I know we're always like, oh, that's gonna look like some country's flag and not just like the US flag. I know more countries have red, white, and blue as their colors, but I think we're always like re reluctant to combine red, white, and blue for that reason. But um, I don't know, they look good. Or like many superheroes, right? Isn't that like super, Superman's colors? Yeah. I'm bad at superheroes. Superman, uh, <laughs> Captain America, obviously. Oh, Captain America's red, white, and blue? Wonder Woman. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, the American one is uh, red, white, and blue, yeah. Is, aren't there two Captain Americas? There's a Marvel Captain There's... America and a DC Captain America, right? Do, I have no idea. Um, if is you DC... get out of Batman for me, I have no clue. Who, Brie Larson, what did she play? Miss um, Marvel. Miss Marvel. Is Miss Marvel kind of like Captain America? No. Or, is it Mr. America or Captain America? Or is it America Man? Help us out. <laughs> Help me out, chat. You guys know I'm bad at um, superhero movies. As in, like, I don't, I know, I don't know any of them. Um, but there is, like, I, I swear there's something that looks like Captain America. Is Captain America DC or Marvel? Do you know that, cat? Marvel. Seth, Seth is over here sneaking <laughs> answers to both of us. Captain America is Marvel. So Marvel... Okay. Well, anyway. It, Captain America is Marvel. Miss Marvel is Marvel. Miss Marvel is Marvel? Uh, is there... There's not a Miss Marvel. There is a Miss Marvel. Is there really? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, I don't, I don't know any of this stuff. I, I need to get better at superheroes, which is a weird thing to hear somebody who's almost 40 years old say, but... I mean, if if you didn't grow up with it, then... I did grow up with it, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to save you. No, I, there's, <laughs> you, you can't. You just threw yourself right in there. I, I, I did grow up with it. I used to watch, like, that X-Men cartoon that was, on, that was on Saturday mornings. Okay. Um, I used to watch that. I don't know, like, I, I really feel like I did grow up with it. I just couldn't keep going with it um, as an adult. And then it really caught me off guard. There were just, like, so many all of a sudden. Okay, well, let's, let's take a look at where this dude's at. A little close-up here. Um, Brie Larson is Captain Marvel. Miss Marvel is someone else. Okay. Then uh, Yeah, I have no idea. I, I'm, I'm not a Marvel person. I'm more of a DC person, but it's mainly <laughs> Batman for me. Okay. All right, well. <laughs> what can I, I don't know. All right, well, you know, to move on from that, we have another super chat. Oh, fun. Uh, and this is from Noah. And they said, Evening Titans, after watching the Tau Terrain video, you have inspired me to buy an airbrush and a tide wall. Going to try the weather technique. Thanks for all that you do for the greater good. Oh, that's awesome, Noah. Um, I'm both excited that you're, you're inspired to buy an airbrush. Let me, let me know what you're getting. Um, uh, excited. And, you know, anything's good. You, got, you, you know I have ones I like. But there's lots of decent airbrushes out there. Um, make sure you keep it clean. And I'm also excited to hear you're getting a tide wall. I told my tide wall story about how it's, you know, that product sold out, I think, in like record time at the time, 2016 or I think 17 when it was released. Um, and it was, it was super cool. Um, it's really cool terrain. And <clears throat> even if you don't use it for like its faction specific rules, which honestly I think is how most terrain is best used when you just use it to like build a board. 
Um, it's really modular. Like you can do a lot of really cool things with it. I um, recommend being really careful with what you glue together. Um, you really don't need to glue very much together at all. Um, so have fun with it. Yeah, it's a super cool kit. Um, yeah, and I find that GW is making a lot more modular terrain stuff. Um, and then they don't really, they're not super specific on like what you glue together, what you don't glue together. Um, so mm -hmm. sometimes when we get terrain kits in the store and, and then, you know, it's handed off to someone who doesn't yet realize that it's modular and everything is glued together, we're like, okay, cool. Well, <laughs> Was <laughs> that useful uh, for this one thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that, that is plastic glue. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. No, this this is a good time to use plastic glue. You're right. It's okay. It's a learning experience. It's a learning experience. Um, it's, a, it's a $140 learning experience. And you know what? Yeah. It happens. But it's really a learning experience, Kat. Sounds like it, it was from you. You you were the one who learned. I've uh, constantly <laughs> learning all the time. Still learning. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's a general mistake that everyone makes. So it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Right. It's it's definitely oh, okay. Yeah. It's whenever okay to make mistakes. Oh my gosh! I, I've been putting some some training together recently, uh, and I would say whenever you can not uh, glue, like for some reason something kind of wedges in well enough or close enough or good enough or whatever, however you want to phrase it, whenever you can do that, do that. Don't glue. Um, magnetization goes a long way in terrain. Um, the tide wall kit actually though pretty safe to glue most of the tide wall kit. Um, and it's fun, to, it's fun to put together. The only other thing I would add if Noah's still around is, Noah, if you're going to airbrush, don't glue the floor, don't glue the floor to the, um, uh, to the walls. To the walls. You don't have to, um, do, uh, when you're done, when you're done. But um, it's way easier to airbrush if you don't do it that way. You get this kind of cool ability to, um, you get this kind of cool ability to like totally paint the floor one way and then paint everything else the other way without like getting any overspray or anything with your airbrush. Um, so I, I would I would definitely recommend holding off and gluing the floor to the walls. Yeah, super cool kit. Yeah, I mean, especially if this is your first time airbrushing as well too, terrain is great for that. Yes. Uh, especially learning like how to hold your models or terrain at different angles to like just catch the top if you're going to be highlighting something or if you're going to be throwing in a shadow, you know, turning it upside down and spraying that way. Um, but yeah, modular terrain is also great to learn how to sub-assembly uh, with an airbrush especially um, before you get that fine motor control. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, airbrushing terrain is the best thing you can do or just airbrushing like a larger model or something. But if you if you're like wanting something that has a little bit more forgiveness and leeway if your blends aren't perfect then terrain is yeah the best yeah or or hear me out gluing a bunch of sprues together in a terrifying <laughs> terrifying wizards of the coast trademarked beholder style and then airbrushing that for some reason i get the like the mental image of um I don't know if you had one of these when you were younger, but they they almost look kind of like the connect balls. Yes. And then you can like expand <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. them yeah, and yeah. then collapse. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Um, yeah. And then also having it be thrown at me by my older sister and having it hurt a lot. So, yeah, those hurt. Yeah. And they're not for throwing either. No. They, they, they don't tell. Well, because they, they expand and then they'll collapse when they hit you and then it pinches everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a nasty childhood weapon. Okay, Red Claw coming out. Uh, we'll probably come back and touch back into the Red Claw a little bit more. Um, and right now, where I'm thinking, like, I'm looking at this guy, I'm looking, I'm thinking, like, way too blue. And I know I'm going to have to touch in a couple other places with, with the black and or the bone. But before I do that, before I make those decisions, I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to come back to my airbrush. Um, I also know I, I have my wet palette here. I have some edge highlighting to do on him. Um, and I'm going to be kind of subtle about the edge highlighting. So what I'm going to work on now, what I'm going to what I'm going to paint um, and attach to him, <clears throat> honestly, are these two little uh, bits that I have separately here. So one is this sword, and I would say that the sword is probably the one I am most hoping will get some color on him. 
uh, because it's gonna, it's huge, as you can see, and it's going to go right here like this. It goes like basically across this whole body. Um, and I'm mostly going to focus on the sword being like bones. And I think the handle here is going to be the, the, the red that I use, or, or a red. Um, so I think that's going to be a good way to get color. And I really recommend that. Like if you have like some kind of model and you're like, oh my god, it's so blue. Um, I'm looking at it like this is too blue for me. But before I do anything drastic to the rest of this, the main uh, part, like I said, I'm going to see what happens when I complete and finish the sword. Um, I don't think the hair is going to help a lot, the, his dreads. Um, <clears throat> I don't like. I don't think it's going to help like get the feel of color being at it because it's it's on the back of the model. But um, I do think the sword is going to help a lot. So I'm going to do my kind of classic bone recipe that I've been doing for ever, which I always start with XV88, which is like th this looks this like ochre color, right? Um, maybe maybe the color that. Games Workshop makes that is the least helpful in understanding what color it actually is, right? Oh, the that specific one. Yeah, Kat, you yeah. walk it. You you work at a game store. Yeah. Are people are you ever like, oh yeah, you should use XV88, and they're like, what? Yeah. What, what <laughs> is that? Is that black? Like, there's no indication. Like. Yeah, well, because I'm I'm bad. I'm awful with names of both names of paint and people as well. So like, I'll know where it is on the paint rack and I'm like yeah this is a good color but then if someone were to go here's a list of things that I need and they they're like this is this is a paint I, I just I have to look it up I have to look up and see what it looks like and then I'll be able to find it um but I mean most yeah, I'm, go ahead Sorry, yeah, yeah no I'm sure it has something to do with the lore of course, of course. <laughs> you know. Um most, you know, uh, barely by the way, barely has anything to do with the lore. But yes, kind of. Most um you know, most GW colors, I love their name, and they give you some indication as to what's going on. Evil Sun Scarlet. Right? That makes sense. Yeah. Um, what else do we have over here? Um, well, Night Lord's Blue. Cantor Blue. Lutheran Blue. I mean, they have blue in them. Um, Terminata Stone. That one, you could be like, hmm. It's sort of maybe gray or brown or something. It's like tan. Yeah. It's like a, it's a cool tan. Yeah, right. There's, there's, some, there's some, some of the lines break down a little bit. Yeah. It's V88, yeah. All right, well, we have another Super Chat um, by Omnisiah Sphinx. Oh, hi, Omnisiah Sphinx. And they said, hearing what you said, I found this on Facebook, and I put it in the Hobby Titans talk on Discord. Now, I pulled up the picture. What am I looking at? This looks cool. What is this? Uh, let's get some context. Um, yeah. Oh, no, is the context... Um... Yeah, it looks like a cool. It, it looks like a really cool picture. Can um, I see it again, Kat? But I don't know what it is. Uh, it doesn't. Is this a Games Workshop model? Um, it looks like it's a third party. Is that like a defiler, guys, or what? What is this called? Yeah, some a kind of some engine? kind of demon engine. I don't. Yeah. I don't know which one, but um, it looks cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm gonna say, if you're still in chat, can you? Um, Tell us why you posted this and what, what you're talking about because it looks really cool. And I don't want to um, give you the worst super chat answer ever, which is, hey, why did you buy this on the side? <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, cool and, is and not an acceptable cool. super I, chat I looked response. at the picture and everything, but um, yeah, sweet. But uh, uh, going back to Noah really quick, uh, they left another super chat. Uh, they said that they used the link in the description to get the airbrush kit. Oh, yeah. Um, and they glued the tiled wall the exact same way you did in the video. And thank you for all the advice. Oh, cool. Yeah. So then they would, uh, that would have been like the, the Badger Patriot 105, which is a great starting airbrush. Yeah. It's fantastic, especially for painting terrain because mm -hmm. they can just throw paint down. Um, yes. You don't have to keep refilling it all the time. Yeah. I like it for terrain. I love it for base coating. Um, honestly, you can paint armies with it. Um, I, th I think it's totally fine. Um, and I don't, Kat, Kat, have you ever used any of the different needles on the Badger? Or do you just use like the one it comes with? I, I just basically use the one it comes with because I have multiple airbrushes, which I know not everyone is privileged enough to have. Because um, I have a Patriot, I have a Sotar, and I have two different Infinities. Yeah. Um, and they all have different needles in them. And so. So you don't need to be swapping out. No. The yeah. And 
honestly, I prefer not to because when it comes to swapping needles, I think what a lot of people don't understand is you need the full conversion kit, mm -hmm. which changes the front nozzle. Yep. Um, which and is that is super important. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's so tiny and small that, yeah, I'd rather not have to swap. Yeah, it also means, um, to Kat's point, it also means that you are, um, if you're using it, you are, uh, there we go, if you're, um, um, nothing special yet, just getting the base coats down on the sword. Uh, the hilt, like I said, I'm going to be doing red. I'm actually going to do, I'm going to leave this view up here real quick while I turn around and grab um, a contrast paint real quick, yoink, because um, I actually really decided I like contrast paint for, um, like, cloth. Um, like this type of thing. Uh, I guess this is cloth. Um, I know that it'll like fall in there nicely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm like spilling all kinds of paint today. I, um, <clears throat> I agree, Kat. The, the needle thing is, is cool. And I will say, um, like, no, or anybody who's getting started and you have a Badger Patriot, the needles are, are great. Um, but the, the changing them is a bit of a pain in the butt. Because, um, like Kat's saying, you're changing a lot of components of them. Yeah. Um, I have used, on my Patriot, I've used the General, which is the um, general purpose, which is the bigger one. It comes with Fine, which is a blue, uh, a blue ball on the end of the needle. Comes with Fine, dark blue ball. You can get General, and General is white, like a white per pearl colored silver mm -hmm. ball on the end of the needle. Um, and then... That rag, this rag that I just spilled Cantor blue and um, Word Bearers red, this rag looks like 4th of July now. Wow, this it's is so a, patriotic. This in is here. a patriotic, this is a patriotic rag. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think the, uh, the, um, the needles are, are not necessarily worth it, but the, the kits are inexpensive. So, like, the, the, they're, not, they're not bad to try out. Yeah, I've done the, um, the general one for terrain, and you know, I like was like, hey, I need to just put a lot of paint down on a bunch of terrain. What happens if I use this extra wide Badger Patriot needle? Um, is this going to be like even faster? And I, you know, I was sitting there using it, and I was like, I can't, I can't get a sense, I can't feel that this is that much faster. You know what I mean? Like, did it really, did it really make it so? Like, did I save time from like? holding back in the spray area being like this big to the spray area being this big. Including the time it took you to change out your needle and everything. And yeah. I can also, this whole time I can just move my hand around. Yeah, yeah, um, I, it's it's neat, it's cool. If you're, if you're going to get a different needle, um, one, get the whole conversion kit. Um, Which I think they, I, I think they mostly sell them that way. Correct? Maybe I'm not right. Maybe I'm not right on that. No, you can you can buy you can buy every single part separately, which is, which is great about Badger. I like that a lot um, because if something ever breaks or you need to replace something, you lose something, your needle gets damaged, whatever, right? Like I yeah. don't want to have to buy the whole conversion kit if like I accidentally drop my needle and I just need to replace my needle. Right. Um, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's great. I like being able to replace you know, different parts of my airbrush because I don't want to have to then send it in to get it specially, you know, worked on and stuff. Um, right. But yeah, um, no, I agree. I agree. It, 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 it comes down to airbrushing is great to save time if it actually saves you time. Right, 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 right. Um, exactly. And the second like your airbrush starts clogging and you're you're having to, to troubleshoot, then you're like, wow, my weekend is ruined. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm working now instead of painting. Can I, like I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I've done this, I've picked up this new uh, habit recently. My, um, you know, like when you have like a hobby and people in your family um, like want to be supportive and so they get you things related to your hobby. Uh-huh. Um, my sister-in-law got me, um, here, I'll, I'll put it on camera. My sister-in-law, Who's, who's great, I love her. Uh, she got me this thing, which looks sort of like a terrifying way to dissect an animal. <laughs> um, and it's like this weird magnifying glass thing uh -huh. that you're like, you know. It also, I think, holds a brush. I think, I think that's what that's supposed to do. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> do you ever use a magnifying glass when you paint? No. I, I don't either, but can I tell you what I start using it for? It's kind of interesting. Sure. 
Uh, maybe it's because I'm... Burning ants? What's that? <laughs> Burning ants, yep. Uh, when I'm painting, every now and then, <laughs> every now and then, I just like need a really high powered, double layered, and like I start burning the ants this way, I'm like, ha, ah, I got you guys. And then when I really want to get an ant bad, yeah. I bring this up and I really... Yeah, when the flying ants come when out. When the flying yeah. ants, like, yeah, because it just like gets that, that, that sun ray really condensed. No, what I've been using it for is um, sometimes when you're painting things um, and you not, not, I never, I never hold it here and paint. Um, but what I do, I don't know, is this actually going to like, what I do is <laughs> I, you, can, you guys can kind of see what's, what's going on. I like to check out a detail this way. Oh, okay. And so what that means is, so like on this sword, you guys will see on the hilt, there's, I saw like some kind of something going on and there's like a little circle disc there, right? Yeah. So I, I was like, I want to see, like, do I want to touch it and paint that? Like, I, I don't need the magnifying glass to paint it. I think I can do it without the magnifying glass. In fact, I don't want to use the mag magnifying glass to paint. To actually paint it, but you want to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've actually find that, um, honestly, the, the types of models it's best for, I tend to find are, um, like, if you, I, I know people hate fine cast. I actually don't really mind fine cast, but I, I don't love it. Um, like fine cast or resin or um, I don't usually need it for like GW plastic but if it's like an older model and it's resin or or um, yeah some type of resin usually I like to kind of go in and be like oh what what exactly is going on here like what do I what do I need to worry about you know the other thing I've been doing it for using it for is after I'm done brush work I'll go into a place where like two wildly different colors are touching like red and bone and I'll look and see, like, did I miss something? Or, like, I, I don't know. You can kind of use it to check your work. Kind of interesting. But, um, no, I absolutely would never use it to paint with, I don't think. Yeah. So I I love, I love two different minds of this, right? Mm -hmm. like, like what we were saying earlier about, you know, way zooming in on a picture of a mini and you start to be like, oh, that's not super great, even though you zoom out and it's like such a beautiful model. Right, right. It's, it's very similar to looking at your paint job under like a super bright daylight bulb, um, especially if you were painting in like not super optimal conditions. Mm -hmm. um, if it looks good to you, then it probably will look good to everyone else, right? And, and it's a thing where not everyone is going to have their noses touching your piece, right? And and so I tend to stay away from magnifying glasses. One, because I, I don't super need them. Right. Um, and two, because it, it inevitably makes me obsess and nitpick over a detail that ultimately really doesn't matter. Yeah. And sometimes no, you're not that wrong. leads to me messing something up and like having to repaint the same thing over and over and over again and then if it, especially if it's a competition yeah. model you build up too many layers of paint and that, that's that's it that's you're kind of done at that point yeah. um which that makes sense yeah so i mean it's great i like it if like if i was doing um scale model work or something where everything needs to be super precise okay um, or if I was building something, I would definitely use a magnifying glass if I felt like I needed to. If I'm making a scene, that's great. But if when it comes to painting, um, my actual model, not so much. I try not to use like I but, try not to do that. I try not to look at it under super harsh light because then I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at a, at a whole. I'm just focusing on that one little bit. So just just. Situationally and for burning ants for cat, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. If I feel like going out in the backyard, I don't like bugs that day. Uh, magnifying magnifying lens is fantastic. Yeah. Can you imagine? Or that, if I'm like hunting down a murderer, great. Oh, for like a, like if you're in like a cold case files type yeah. situation. Yeah. Like if you need to be part of B roll stock footage for like detect for like uh, for like an A and E. Yeah. Detective thing, yeah. like yeah, yeah. like uh, and CIS, yeah, 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 back at the mm -hmm. lab, cat, yeah. and like you have this out, and you're like, yeah, I got it. Cat <laughs> yeah. has made an interesting discovery, <laughs> yeah, with her magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, so it's we good got, for B-roll. We got an answer from Omnisci. <laughs> yes, I, yes, 
What, what, what did he say? Uh, he said that that picture was a, um, it's a kit bash of a corn Lord of Skulls from leftover bits from other modules, which I think is actually oh, really, 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 really cool. Because I we were talking earlier about how I like this, like, huge emphasis that the hobby world is turning to now with kit bashing and, and making personal sculpts and stuff yeah and just being like this is my finished pr product right like yeah. how sculptors are getting a lot more credit and recognition for the fantastic work that they do and it's not just focused on oh well if it's not painted then i'm not impressed i always say like whenever i i'll paint something and and i'll post it or i'll show somebody and they're like oh man really nice job or and i'm always kind of like you know what thank you but honestly um there's a lot to be thinking about like the sculpt, like the sculpt, how it takes paint, how it was engineered, but even just the, of course, like the, the artisticness behind it, right? How it's put together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I really like how um, Game Star Shop not only puts a lot of emphasis in, in, you know, the, I guess the style of the model, how it's posed, everything like that, how dynamic the pose is, um, but also how well it's, the kit itself is engineered. Um, I really appreciate that because it makes it easy to put together. And then when you go to like put something else together, and it's not as great, and you're like, man, I see. I see now where my money is going towards when it comes to like buying the premium model kits and stuff. Yeah, I do. I do agree with this. Um, and <clears throat> even like we've we've chatted a little bit about this on stream before, but. I will say that I have been finding that a lot of these kind of like independent um, sculptors who are doing like 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 this, like WR Tell. I included the link, by the way, folks, um, for where this model, where you can get this model on um, their site. And I do find that um, a lot of them are doing really good work too. It tends to be like if you buy an old model or buy something from like a like a company that is not GW. Oftentimes, I'm kind of like, hmm. Um, you know, a little bit to, like, you get a little spoiled. Um, but a lot of the independent retailer, uh, just, like, people, like, making their own, designing their own, getting their own, either, like, 3D prints or just getting their own made with resin, um, a lot of them are, are pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding that people are paying more attention to it, which I appreciate. Because it, it, it does make a difference, especially with sub-assemblies and everything like that. Um, yeah, how well engineered your kit is makes a huge difference. Some what is models, this brush you're using? Um, this is the Citadel oh, okay. synthetic. Yeah. Interesting. I know, you're not the biggest fan of these, but I'm... You're skeptical on these, huh? I'm sure they're great. <laughs> I'm sure they're great. Oh, okay. To each their own, right? Yeah, sure. Um, you can use your magnifying glass for whatever you want. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, you know, to each their own. What are you, what paint are you using? This is Agrax Earthshade. Okay. So I'm just touching in a little bit uh, on on the bone just to give it some definition. Um, otherwise, it's just a giant blob of, um, that was actually Typhon Ash. Um and I did finally find some Agrax or Shade in the Bay Area. Um, <laughs> so I bought a bunch. Still can't find non-oil. My non-oil reserves, I will say this, <clears throat> maybe, maybe fitting for real world events, but my non-oil reserves are running dangerously low. Oh no. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty worried about it, if I'm honest. Um, gonna have to start getting creative here soon. Um, fortunately, I, I'm, I'm working on some projects um, through sheer through sheer luck, some of my upcoming projects I don't think need that much non oil. Um, but man, really running low on non oil. So, boy, if anybody happened to run a run a game a chain of game stores in the Bay, Bay Area, <laughs> and could uh, could tell me where I could get some non oil sometime, that'd be great information to share off air. Yeah, that would be really great if someone could uh, share that information. Yeah, that'd be on, great. Uh, where is some normal oil? Yeah, I, and maybe, maybe, uh, maybe if that person needed to know where to get some Agrax Earthshade, I could let that person know where I found this Agrax Earthshade. 
I did buy it all, so there's none left currently, but <laughs> we do know that at least that they um, they do. It made an appearance. It made an appearance. Right, and so look, it's... if it made an appearance once, you know. Yeah. Um, no, I wish I could tell you, honestly, on or off air. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was a thing where I saw it. I saw it a couple weeks ago. You always buy non-oil cat. It exists. It exists, but only in gloss. In gl gloss, sure. <laughs> of course, of course, we all know that. Oh my gosh, cat is like, like, I, like we go, like I go down a dark alley, and she's like, "Hey, you want some non-oil?" Her, heard you're looking for non-oil, and she puts all non-oil gloss. I, I, I lure you into that dark alley. And uh, you can't see exactly what I have. This, you don't but I have see your like, magnifying glass on you. But I see like the shininess. I'm like, look at all those little shiny pots of, of, of black. Right. Why yeah. are they shimmering so much? Um, I know. I, I, need to, I need to find. And whenever I bring this up about like the non-oil shortage, un undoubtedly someone in chat is going to bring up this amazing idea, which I have to say is like totally fair. They're going to be like, make your own non-oil. Um, and I've, you know, on Hobby Titans here on our YouTube, we have this, like, hidden playlist that's just, like, videos we like um, that we, like, add. And we're like, cool, this will be useful or we'll show this off later. Or we'll show this technique and give this person credit. And we've done that before with videos. And there is one that's, like, make your own non-oil. And um, it's very funny, like, sometimes YouTube, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but sometimes YouTube thumbnails can be misleading for what actually happens in the video. Um, Whoa. Yeah, so <laughs> heads up, if you didn't know that, heads up. So um, <clears throat> when that happens, it's like the guy's like, make your own non-oil. And it's a really cool video. He did a great job on it. And at the end, he's like, yeah, here's my own non-oil. And then he, like, shows you how he does it and how it compares to real non-oil. And he's like, yeah, I like real non-oil better. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, because I, I I make all my washes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can understand. Like if I was if I was painting an army, I would definitely not make my own wash. I would I would rather buy it than you know mix it every single time. Unless I was mixing it in a in a larger pot. But most of the models that I paint are just kind of like one offs. Okay. Um, right, 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 right. So, yeah. It, now, that's not great. always going to be the case, though. No. We, no. uh, did we, we might have, well, Ooh, I, don't to, I don't know if she's ready to, I don't know if she's ready to admit the. No, I need to, I need to say it. Okay. Or I, I will continuously, like, be like, well, I haven't said anything yet, so, like, I'm not promising anything. Yeah. yeah I'm going to make a, a Gloom Spike Gits army. Yeah. And um, this is great for you, yeah. because you've been, like, You've been excited about um, this idea of, of like painting something in like a cute hammer type way. Yeah, cute hammer. And um, you're like, oh, if I paint this chapter in cute hammer, like of Space Marines or something, people won't like it. And first of all, like that's stupid. You should always do that. But if there's an army, again, we're talking about how good the sculpts are, right? If there's an army that's just like designed to be made for cute hammer, it is Gloom Spike gets right. Like Gloom Spike gets. They're they're already cute. Like. You could paint them as menacingly as possible and they still look cute. Yeah, I am down to two paint schemes um, in my head of how I want to paint them. Um, haven't decided yet. One of them is, is far harder than the other. Um, but I also don't know how, like, I'd be able to pull it off. Um, and I don't, I don't want to say anything just yet, just in case, just in case, so. J just in case you have to back out of both paint schemes? No, I'll, I'll definitely pick one. One, yeah, one was just kind of like a, what if I did this? And <laughs> everyone that I've talked to so far has been like, that'd be really cool, but how are you going to pull it off? So, you know, I don't know if it's going to be like super doable. Yeah. Um, but. I do really want to do cute hammer, and uh, I've been inspired by a couple posts that I've seen on Instagram. Um, but I also think that, like, there just needs to be more cuteness in a war game. Yeah, AOS is good for cuteness. I mean, you know, 40k um, is like grim dark future, so <clears throat> they have really in the past few uh, in the past decade 
strongly toned down the amount of cuteness that they're that they're letting into the game. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. If I'm honest, I'm okay with that. Um, because I think AOS is a good place for it, right? Instead, and they can kind of they can kind of get away with it by having it go different directions than their two IPs, which I'm into. Um, so you know. Yeah, I think the. Um, I, I wish I remembered what, like who it was on Instagram that I saw that really inspired it, um, but it was an Eldar ship, and it uh, faded from like a pearl, like a sparkly white color to like a sparkly hot pink. Um, and then there was this beautiful free hand on it um, that was white and it had a bunch of hearts and everything. And then the picture was just so well done. It was in like a bouquet of like roses. That's and it, amazing. It, yeah, it was, it was so cool. I loved it so much. Well, um, I wanna see that. And yeah, I, I think I could probably go back and try and find it, um, but it was great. I'm like, there needs to be more cuteness in this. I, I've rarely ever seen anyone do like a full army mm -hmm. um, and stick to like a specific theme. Cuteness um, the whole time. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Yeah. Uh, we do have another super chat though. Awesome. Uh, it's from Kudos Kismet. And they said, I just started a Harlequin army and I'm finding I want to make them pop. How long do you typically spend on a single model? One down, 50 models to go. And I think, Zach, we're going to have very different answers to this. Yeah. Um, you go first. Uh, one model, I will spend anywhere from... Three months. Give some context also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a competition painter. So honestly, I have a deadline for when I need to finish things. Um, and that helps motivate me a lot. If I don't have a deadline, I will pluck away very slowly at something um, and then make a lot of excuses of like why I'm not done yet. Um, I will always try and find more and more and more things to do to a model. It doesn't super help. Um, like when I don't have like an end time or something, I, I think that really, yeah, I, I tend to jump around a lot. Um, but when I'm focused on one model, I'll spend anywhere from three months to... I think I'm at two years and counting right now on one model. Um, now, also for context, like that, that's not necessarily something you're working on every day, right? Uh, no, no. I like, I, I, cause I do have, you know, my, my full-time job and that sometimes pulls me away for long periods of time. Like mm. I, I do travel a lot. Um, and then I do have deadlines with that. And so if I find that, you know, it, yeah, I, I, my priorities shift a lot. Okay. But, um, if I'm obsessed with something, like if I'm like, okay, this is all I want to paint and this is all I want to do, then yeah, I will paint it every single day. Okay. Um, even if it's just for like a couple hours or maybe even just one hour, um, I find that if I take too long of breaks, it, those breaks just get longer and longer and longer. Um, and then I lose focus of like what I want to do. And then, and then there's this like restarting back up the engine type feel. Sure. Yeah. Like, cause right now I'm, I'm in, um, contest crunch. Um, and I feel like I'm in a really good area, but I, I can't slow down. So that, that's the thing. Can we um, talk about your contest? Sure. So it, yeah. in the front view here, and then we'll come back to this view in a second, you guys may notice this thing spinning around behind me. Uh, this is actually the cat's competition piece that she's working on for, what, what competition is this? This is the Resin Beast competition from Creature Caster, and they are holding it at Adepticon um, this year. Uh, and I, I think their first year that they held it um, was the 2019 Adepticon. Um, and this guy was going to be for the 2021, 
Um, but obviously, we all know what happened with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, same thing happened with the, the 2021. So, yeah, this is the uh, in-person Resin Beast competition. Because I know that Creature Caster did an online um, submission thing yeah. for, I think, 2020 and 2021. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of, like, online competitions, mostly just because I don't have, a, a, like, a fantastic camera to take um, really cool pictures of things. But, yeah, this is currently what I'm working on, hopefully. I have, like, about two we weeks to go. Yeah, now, I, um, I, I did make sure to clean my hands, so I'm not getting, like, <laughs> cat, cat gets her... Uh, Gets her model back and it has like clearly like my custom like, like, my, like my custom uh -uh. Sim Han like color like all over it. like <laughs> a color only I use. Um, but this is it. This looks uh, this looks gorgeous. Yeah, um, this is the uh, the Plague Angel from Creature Caster, who now is unfortunately discontinued. Um, for you know good reason. I hope they bring them back. But yeah, the quality of their. Um, their first gen models weren't super great, which is, I think, their reason for discontinuing this guy. Um, hopefully, he comes back. If you look up pictures of him, he is a little bit different. I did do some minor customization on him. Um, but yeah, he's going to have a really cool base, hopefully, soon. Um, but I had a, a huge concept for him, and, this, and then I had to scale that back like massively. He was going to be in my mind, like kaiju size, um, but that involved me scratch building an entire skyscraper and, <laughs> and little tiny chairs and desks and stuff, and I scaled it back. I mean, at that point, your your life is just going a different direction, right? Yeah, yeah. If you are if you are like sculpting little tiny chairs and desks, then that's I mean that's not that's nothing wrong with that, but like you just have to acknowledge that you're like, hey, I, this is what. Oh. You just have to acknowledge that, like, hey, this, this is, is my life. This now. is my life now. Yeah. This is what I do now. <clears throat> um, now, uh, sorry, Kat. Who the the question about how long did it take on a model? How long does it take you to? Yeah, who, how long who, do you who, typically who, spend on a single uh, model? Who was that? Uh, what was uh, this was uh, kudos. kudos Kismet. Kismet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is a really great question, and I think it's a fair question. And I do think, um, you know, I don't think Kat and I have difference of philosophies. I think it's it's about context and about goals. And what, what are you trying to do? I, I actually do like competitive painting, um, but I'm, typically I'm trying to win like best painted army in an event that I also play at, right? Right. So um, I, you know, I want to go to an event, I want to do well playing, which means, um, honestly, I need to also play, which takes time um, and, and, and practice and get good at my army. Um, and I also want to paint the army. I, I always play with fully painted armies. I, I don't like playing with armies, especially at events that are other people's. On stream here, of course, that's fun. But I, I always like playing my own um, painted miniatures, not other people's. Um, so, you know, I think you should ask yourself about a couple of things. I, I would approach this in a few ways. I'd say, one, what is the goal? If the goal is to have a Harlequin's army that you can start playing with with your friends, then you you would think, you know, set a time. Like, I kind of like Cat's Eye concept of, like, you did your first test model. You now saw how long it, t how long it took. Um, and now your next kind of question is, how long can each one of these take? If that one took me three days um, and, I, and I roughly spent three days on each model, um, do, can I, am I okay playing with this army in 150 days from now? For the first time, and that's five months. Um, and so, so maybe, maybe not, right? Like five months. Like, is that? Is, let me actually get rid of these guys. Is that how long you wanna you wanna spend before you get right. to play? Yeah, and I I agree, right? Because I've I've done small batch painting for like little squads and stuff, um, and I won't I won't spend nearly as much time on a model that is just gonna go on a on a table and I'm gonna play with. Right. Um, it, but it's a thing where I find I will pour a lot of time into that first model, and that's usually my character, um, and that's just because I'm I'm coming up with um, like a different like I, I'm I'm trying to develop my paint scheme, um, and yeah. then once I get that down, then 
like I know what paints I need, what what I'm going to grab for, where to put them, how I want them. Right, right. And then it significantly speeds that up. I also highly recommend assembly painting. Like if it using so, one color, painting all of that one color and then going back, changing your color, painting all of that one color. Yeah. Um it significantly speeds it up and you can still put a lot of time and effort into your models and make them look fantastic yeah um it's just you're not you're not switching around your color all the time you're not constantly uh like cleaning out your airbrush or your brush or whatever or changing out your wet palette all the time because oh you've spread out your paints too much and now you need a new piece of paper um, right so yeah there's there's ways that you can make them look you know like you can get best painted but not have to spend a year on on them. Obviously, it depends on how many models you have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like assembly painting significantly reduces the amount of time that you spend on each individual model. And you, instead of looking at them individually of like, okay, one down, 50 to go, you're like, okay, well, I got all my blues out of the way. Now I just need to move down these colors. Um, and, you know, if you're only using 15, 20 colors, I don't know if that's too much, but, you know, if you're only using so many colors and, you, and you're getting all your colors out of the way and you're like, okay, cool, I can shell this color now, um, it changes your perspective in the way that you think about it. Um, and it seems like less of a chore at that point. I think that's good advice. I think, like, <clears throat> painting an army is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a lot about... Uh, <clears throat> developing a process, right? Like g getting a process down and um, just executing that process over and over again. So to answer the question ultimately though, Kismet, to how much time do I spend per model? That would honestly be very hard for me to answer um, after all this and then me telling you I'm about to answer it. I'm still not sure that I really can. Um, but what I, what I will say is this, I, I think about that before I start a project. Um, we, we, we haven't put this video up yet, it, um, hopefully it will come out next week. Um, the, the computer uh, issue t makes it a little bit of an issue, but we've talked about the Fire Slayers army that, we, that I painted um, with a little bit of Bridger's help in, in honestly about two days, two and a half days. Um, and we knew, when, well I knew when I started to paint that army that that army would be a giant shortcut army. And I knew that um, it would be about selection of color and honestly it would be a little bit more about philosophy and placement the, of color right yeah, yeah. It, it, exactly It'd be a little more about like the philosophy of art rather than the craft part of art so it's um if you will uh you know th this thing that i was trying to accomplish and i thought to myself what are what makes what's the hold up when we paint models right um the hold up is brushwork almost always right um, but brushwork also is what makes models really look good. You know, just going through and airbrushing models, we saw this guy at the beginning right away, we're all saying, oh, he looks like he's ready for the tabletop. Sure, but you're not excited about him, right? Like, I, I, you know, with some brushwork, I can be at least excited about him. With more brushwork, maybe even after the stream, um, I can be even more excited about him. So you can, you, you build excitement with that brushwork. Um, I wasn't super excited about Fire Slayers conceptually. It's not an army that like speaks to me. So we said, hey, how fast can we paint this army? It'd be cool to learn. Um, plus I just want to see how fast I could paint like 2,500 points of Age of Sigmar. Uh, the next Sigmar army I'm painting, it, um, the next two I'll, I'll take progressively more and more time on, um, starting with the, with the Bone Reapers and then going on to um, the Daughters of Cain. And, you know, that's, that's a choice. And so, like, it's part of the process of thinking about how long do I want to spend on each model. Harlequins are an army that, like, look, I think there's a case to be made that every army out there you could pick to choose a really long time on each model. Harlequins, to get them to look good, and there's some really good-looking Harlequin armies out there. The bar is pretty high, right? So it's yeah, an army that, that right, it's an army that wants a lot of time spent on it, um, it's demanding, so. Yeah, so so I, it kind of blends into um, also Sushi Man Daddy's uh, super chat really quick. Um, uh, 
uh, super inspired by Goober Town, I bought an enormous uh, WHFB orc and goblin army. I have like 400 gloom spite stabas to paint. I'm tired of contrast paints. How do you recommend s painting speedy airbrush? Yeah, yeah, you can 100%. But you know, like we, we, I think, have talked about numerous times is you don't need an airbrush to be a fast painter. Um, there's different ways that you can go about things. Um, and even if it, you know, something takes a lot of brush work or whatever, um, I, I find using a bigger brush helps you. Which have sounds to... so like obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and like, uh, did you think about using a bigger brush? But it is like, like, why is it, why is that? I'm interrupting you, Kat, but why is that the case? Like, I mean, other than like, you can cover more, more ground physically yeah. with a bigger brush but it's also you're dipping it less a bigger brush i find holds a lot more moisture than a smaller brush you um can do really fine detail work with just the tip of a bigger brush um and then you're not getting as much dry tip because the brush itself is more moist um and so you can just paint for longer without having to clean your brush, re-dip it, you know, like re, you know, add water or, you know, a drying retarder or is whatever, like painting medium or anything like that. Um, the l less you have to break to do something, the faster your painting is going to be no matter what. And so setting yourself up with the right tools and then also just coming up with a game plan initially of these are my paints, this is where they're going to go. And then setting those paints to the side, I have a couple different ways of how I do that. You can just shove all your paints of what you're using in a box or like a Ziploc bag, and that's the paint for your army. Um, you know, I've seen people do notebooks and stuff, and that's really cool. Um, I don't think I'll ever do that, but... Um, notebooks? Yeah, like like little paint notebooks, which I think are super awesome. They'll put little paint splotches in there. And they'll write the name of the paint, and then they'll be like, "This is for the skin." And I'm like, "Wow, that's really neat." As someone who loves taking notes, I'm kind of baffled that I don't want to do that, but I don't want to do that. So, but that is an option. I mean, can't you just write the name of the paint down? Kind of, but like if if you're using like custom mixes or whatever custom mixes or you know if you're if you're painting a bone color and then you're also painting pale skin sometimes that overlaps as well too um or those paints look very similar and so you know if, if you're going to take a break from from painting something or if you're painting multiple things you know i don't know I, whatever works for you i guess is really what it is yeah i mean sorry i that that's that's not exactly what i want to do people are like um Oh hey, uh, this is how I do it, and you're like, "Oh, can you just do it this way?" Like, no, like I, I should, I shouldn't say it um, uh, because I do meticulously keep like um, Google Docs of mm. everything I paint. Um, even after the stream, I'll go on like tonight, probably when I'm at home, um, and I'll write down what I did on this guy in my Sim Han thing. I'll say I'll be like, "Striking scorpions are painted this way," and I, and I write it down. Oh, okay, I write everything down um, because man. Just, I don't know, write everything down, guys. That, that's like big advice I would always give to anybody. Yeah, when or I, take pictures, right? Take, like if you just set up your models and then, you know, all your paint and then take a picture of it and then file that away, yeah. I think that works as well. Um, one nice thing about being on a YouTube stream is that I can just rewatch my own streams, which, by the way, I hate doing. So the punishment fits <laughs> the crime. Whenever I don't, I'm like, oh, I got to watch this idiot to see how I can, I can watch past Zach to see how I'm supposed to do this. Like his voice is so annoying. Well, oh, that's too much, too much, too much. So obviously, as you guys can see, I'm doing a little edge highlighting. This is um, in the wet palette here, and it's literally Lutheran blue, uh, one part Lutheran blue, one part white. The white is, in this case, a Minotaur Skull White, one of my favorites. Um, but this guy's gonna be very, very close to being done. Um, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm thinking about what else I, I'm gonna do. I do know that um, he has a, a strap here for his sword that I need to paint. <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys one of the things I love about um, using Citadel Air right here. 
this is going to be a great example. One of the reasons I love using Citadel Air as a, um, as a brush paint is I know that when I go over this area, this, this light colored area, this light blue colored strap right here with Corvus Black, uh, because it's, it's transparency, because it's more trans transparent than like a base paint, I'm going to also get a little bit of water. I'm going to get it on my wet palette. Um, I know that highlights are going to peek through. And so what I can, I'm, it's, I'm almost using it in this regard. Like a contrast paint like or a like a wash or something. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm almost using it as like a contrast paint or a wash. And I know a couple things are going to happen. One, it's going to remain kind of a tinted blue, like ever so slightly tinted blue. And I actually like that. I actually want that because I, I want that to, to, to sync with the rest of the model. Um, this, this strap is not a thing I want to be contrast with the red or the bone. Um, right. I have two red items, <clears throat> the claw and the sword hilt. I have two bone items, the sword and the skull. The skull is about to get some red on it as well, um, by the way. But I, I don't really want the strap to be like, oh, look at the strap. You know what I mean? Like nobody, like, like Carandros, <laughs> Phoenix. Look at this awesome job I did on this strap Car on his leg. Yeah, yeah Carandros. Phoenix Lord Wright of the Striking Scorpions. You're not like, you know what makes him cool? The strap. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, <clears throat> finding focus on your model, I think, is, is fantastic, too. Because, like, I, going back to my, my current competition piece, I put so much time and effort into his wings. I individually painted on all the texture on his wings and everything. It's a great sculpt. Um, just sometimes I find that texture in that sculpt gets in the way a little bit. Um, and then all I was doing was just focusing on his wings. And so I had to go back in and do a lot more work on his face. And with that sculpt in particular, because his face kind of points down, it was a little bit harder. But um, yeah, I think keeping in mind like what you want people to look at initially yeah. when they first see your model is super important because you can pour all your time and effort into there. And then, you know, that cuts down all the, on, like, a lot of time of what you're doing with the rest of your model. Because then you don't have to paint texture into this leather strap around his leg. Right. Yeah. The, 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 the prophetic and powerful strap <laughs> of, oh, 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 of Crandros, the striking scorpion phoenix lord. Um, okay, I'm actually doing something I don't often do, and I'm actually, well, I, that's not true. I, I sometimes add, I know this sounds silly, but I don't usually use skull white on my bone, um, unless it's like airbrush with like a little bit of bringing up something, like I'll probably do it with my bone reaper's army, because that's like their main thing is their bone, right? So I'll probably highlight them that way um, a little bit. But um, typically I like to keep my bone, bone colored, and even wow. though it is called skull white, I don't always like to add skull white to my bone. But as Kat was just saying, this is sort of like, this is a tiny infantry model that shows up in the game and like wrecks face. And it's like, I don't know how long he's gonna last in every game, but he's like an epic character. And he's just a tiny little dude. So something, I, I need something to, to pop. And he's holding the skull up. So I am gonna go ahead and, and grant this skull. I kind of like to think of it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge that I want the skull to have that top layer of highlight imaginable. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I, want, I, I want your attention to be drawn by the skull. Um, I don't want the skull to be... Washed out. I don't want the skull to be strap. Yeah, to be strap right. status. It to be... Yeah. And look, I still have to put red on this, blood red on this guy. Yeah, I actually learned something really interesting the other day. I have yet to fact check it, so of course I'm just going to say it. Live okay, on the I internet. love this. We're we are all about this on Hobby Times. We love. Um, we don't listen, guys. We don't manufacture or necessarily spread conspiracy theories, but we do think they're funny. We do enjoy them. So let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, the way that you can tell chicken, like when you're eating chicken, like fried chicken, if it was frozen or not is if the bone inside of it, if it's black, like not like black, like pitch black, but like if it's a darker color than what you would typically think like a chicken bone would be, 
But I thought that the was inside really... of the bone, like the marrow. No, like just the outside of the bone. Like if you're eating like chicken wings or something, um, and the bones are darker than what they should be, that means that it was like frozen, like frozen, frozen, solid. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. So it's like a way to check the quality of your chicken, I guess. Um, but yeah, I didn't fact check it. I should probably. Uh, we should do an experiment. Yeah, we should just cook chicken on a stream. <laughs> Here's the thing about the experiment: Will we ever even know? Like, what? How? What do we do? We just keep, just keep cooking different chicken. You just, just bring in a couple deep fryers. <clears throat> um, I think that would be great, and I think I, I would really like cleaning up after that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was interesting because I'm, I'm really into watching, you know. Uh, different restaurant videos and stuff, and so you just watch them. That was just something that was just offhandedly said, and I'm like, this is a core memory now. I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. I, I don't like know it. if it's actually true or not. I like it. Um, but yeah, so I, I think we should just all experiment at this point with chicken <laughs> and black bones, black yeah. bone chicken. Um, let me point out a couple of things with this model. One thing I'm gonna have to do later on. Um, he has a soul stone, which is cool, as, as Eldar do. Uh, but I've been painting the soul stones of my army blue, and I did this guy's soul stone blue as well. And of course, the rest of them is blue, so it's not a great look. The soul stone you definitely want popping. So I'm going to do a soul stone red. I don't have, um, I, I like to do my soul stones with um, the kind of gradient. You guys have seen me do these before, the gradient of metallic. Um, with a black dot on the top left and a white dot on the top uh, on the bottom right and I've done that um, So metallic I did lead Belcher little dot of black on the top left little dot of white on the bottom right Okay, if the soul stone is big enough I'll do a couple or maybe two or three depending on how big um, kind of gradients of the metallic But then I take the I like the GW soul stone technical ones and that's what I have soul stone blue I don't have the red one, um, at least I don't think I do. So um, I'm gonna, I guess, get the red one and redo this so that it's, you know, red. Because I think that's gonna look better <laughs> than this this blue one here. Uh, um, okay, Cat, ready? What do you think? Anything? What what else screams to you that 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 would look awesome on this dude? Um, did you paint his hair? Oh no. He needs hair. Here's his hair. I haven't done that yet. It's it's gonna be black, which means it's not gonna like. It's not gonna. How do you feel about yellow as like an homage to the original paint job? Black yellow, yellow hair. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I have to do it. Right, because it. Because you said it. <laughs> but because um, the original is like green and yellow, and I I was looking up some pictures. And the dreads are sometimes yellow, or they have like bands of yellow in them. And I think that looks really cool. Um, here's what I'm thinking. I'm not going to do yellow. Okay. Now, <laughs> do, I, do I dislike your idea? Not necessarily. Here's it my sounds like you do. Here's my concern, <laughs> here's my concern with yellow. Um, we get into um, like little boys... Uh, color like little four-year-old boy clothing like situation. All Yellow, primary all colors. primary colors. Yeah, that's this fair. is my major concern. What about gold. Um, no. <laughs> gold actually maybe. Gold could be interesting. <clears throat> um, I know, like black is going to look good, but it's not going to look wow. I also am just sort of like, look, if that's his hair. Is that a part of the model that we're really, like, it's kind of back here. It's not like, I don't know. Um, I might just be boring and do and do black. I hate to say it. No. <laughs> um, I know, it's kind of boring. Gold? I don't know. Because I've, I've seen somewhere it was black and then, like, almost like they had, like, gold cuffs or something, like, like gold bands in their hair. Um, but... I don't know what the actual, this sculpt looks like. Yeah, I like, know on the original sculpt it has some sort of like plating on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you can kind of fake it with this. I don't think anyone's going to like 
Yeah, yeah, so I, I but, could go in there and do a few bands yeah, of gold. Yeah, I don't want to pressure you into anything, but you're, I you're honestly not. really think yellow would look really, really, really cool. Um, <laughs> and you'd be really cool for doing it. <laughs> yellow. yellow. Um, look, I'm not doing yellow. Okay. <laughs> uh, you almost talked me into it, but no. Um, but that's, almost. That's fair. Almost, but no. Oh, someone um, is saying, uh, like, silver or something. White, yeah, yeah. Bryce. Um, Some, someone, yeah, Bryce. Someone, Bryce, <laughs> who we know, yeah. Uh, silver could be interesting. Um, what about, like, a cool fade, like ombre? Ombre hair is really in. Uh, ombre hair is cool. What what would the fade be? Uh, like, black into white tips or something? Unless that would just look... Zenithald for some reason. Yeah, but, I'm um, kind of thinking. Um, or maybe like, I don't know, black into yellow. <laughs> um, or, or black mm. into red. Okay, I wait, I have cool an idea. Bringing some red into the back of the model. Because like, if you oh, look at the back of him, that's, that's, that's you it. don't really see a whole lot of red. Oh, okay. That's good. So here's what I was about to do, but I actually like that better. What I was about to do is um, you'll, you'll see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of this. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of ombre, but what I'm gonna do then is that then I'm gonna spray the whole thing. Is it gonna focus? Yes. Okay. Then I'm gonna spray the whole thing. Immediately out of focus. I'll I'll just cut to this right here. Immediately out of focus. Yeah. Because oh, okay. um, up against the red cup, it's a. Uh, oh, it's I can a move the red. Battle. I can move the red cup. Let's move the red cup. Because this is really important. The people need to see this. No, I'm right. just kidding. What what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set myself up. For, for like a, like the ombre, like white. Mm -hmm. But we're worried that this is gonna look kind of xenthal. So what I was thinking I would then do, still, still, up. Okay, up, still, up. It's so small. It's hard to hold yeah. in, there we go. It's hard to hold an airbrush in. Okay, so what, what, I'm, what I'm then gonna do. Okay, I think You wanna be a, careful of your overspray though, onto your actual model. I know, over here. The Elmers is starting to. The Elmers is start to have enough. Um, oh, that's okay. We can fix that. Actually, that that might actually be okay. That might be. Yeah, I think that's actually what I want. Um, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is, I was gonna use. Well, actually, Kat, I might ask. Do you have Do you have your? Um, I want to use an ink on him. I was gonna use the blue ink. Do you have your red ink? Yes. <laughs> Good thing you happen to suggest that so I can use your paint. Cat carries around a kind of like a wardrobe size uh, container of paint with her that she wheels around. It's like a coffin, really. So, yeah, we'll just. Oh, wait, is this gonna be too pink though? This might be too pink. Well, we'll find out. So I have uh, penetrating red ink or okay. clear red. Clear red is significantly darker, but I don't know how it's going to apply over white. Um, I, I'm worried that ooh, penetrating red is kind of orange. It's not going to be too pink, though, huh? I don't think so. I mean, if you put enough layers on it, it will definitely darken it up. Okay. We're going to do penetrating. And because it's an ink, even if you spray it over the black, you're not really going to see it. This is going to, I mean, this is just like, yeah, this is going to be um, way too dark. That's not going to be like a, a, a visual point anymore, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this. Cat with her ball bearings and all of her paints. <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> I should, I should do that more. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna tint this red. Oh yeah, it's not too pink. Okay, so we'll give it, we'll give it a sec to dry and do a second coat. But we can get, we can get a look about how, how get a sense. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. I think that, uh, yeah, that's gonna look really cool. I'm glad yeah. you went with the ombre at least. Yeah, even the though ombre. You don't like yellow. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Th this might have been okay with yellow, like doing it kind of like this with a yellow ink or something. But the yellow is just not like, it's just not otherwise established in the model. You know what I mean? Well, the eyes, I guess. His eyes are yellow. So, oh, and the base. The base will also help a lot. Okay. Here we go. Second coat. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you said you're going to put blood on his uh, comfort skull? On his comfort skull, yeah. Um, do you have, like, are you just going to use blood for the blood god, or do you have, like, a special formula? I, I have um, I have a Minotaur ghost tint. Oh, okay. Fresh fresh blood by Minotaur, which I think is pretty similar to blood for the blood god, yeah? It, it Color-wise, probably, does it dry the same? It dries wet and glossy looking. Okay, then, yeah. Yeah, so I think I think we're gonna. Uh, I think we'll use that. That's what I use on my ogres and and um, stone stone horns and. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I like this. This is good. This is a good touch in with red on the back. I'm really excited for this actually. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, teamwork. So we still get the red. It makes your minis pop. It makes things pop a little bit. Yeah. Oh, teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now, oh, there we go. Elmer's is done. Okay, let's see how this is. Let's, yeah, this is fine. You know what it tends to do is it doesn't hurt anything up. It just, it just um, is a problem going down. If that makes sense, like like that, right? If I was, if I cared about that, that would be ugly. But like, he's fine. There's something a little bit here, but that's okay. All right. <clears throat> um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, gluing here. So he, we're almost done. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna glue here. Cut this camera. Okay, glue here. Come up. I was actually also the. I will say the other thing about this model line. I was this. Uh, this model I was very surprised at was how well um, it's super glued together. I don't know about you, Cap, but I've I've had like um, third party models. Uh, like different. I don't know if it's like the resin. Was it resin? Something yeah. where they don't. They, like, it's, almost, it's so hard to get them to stick together with glue. Sometimes I find, do you scrub your, your resin models? Well, um, you know, I, I did not at first when I was younger. Then I, then I did, um, and then now I don't. And the reason I don't anymore is because I'm, maybe I've come to expect a certain level. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so... To, that the answer to that is complicated, I guess I would say. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, sometimes I find that the mold release that some companies use um, for their resin affects like how well things stick to it, including glue. Okay. Um, and it forms this like weird, weird layer where it, nothing wants to cure, whether it be like super glue or paint. Um, I find this is the case with like Reaper Bones models. Oh, Reaper? Yeah, like they're, they're little plastic models and stuff. Um, if you don't scrub those like super well, yeah. um, the paint doesn't really dry and it, 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 it turns out kind of tacky and almost glossy in a way. Um, and so if you're going to be painting like some cool Reaper models, mm -hmm. um, which are fantastic because uh, they're cheap and, you know, you can do a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, and they're also great for just like, hey, I want to paint one thing different. Right? Yeah, like, or just practice, practice as well, too. Yeah. yeah, one of my first models was a, a little chibi uh, Cthulhu model. Um, but, yeah, you have to, like, super scrub them with, like, warm water, dish soap, any degreasing soap. Um, and same thing with all your resin kits and everything. And honestly, yeah. it's just a good practice to get into. Um, so that might be it. It might also be the activator in the resin might not be like fully activated as well yeah. too. Yeah, so it, it's it's a couple different things. I find that I, I have that issue happen more often with um, 3D printed models. And if you don't wash them oh, like okay. in alcohol yeah. fully, yeah. Um, okay, I have got a base for Korean. I just varnished this dude. I've got a base for him picked out here that I already made. I picked, I'm doing one with one of the Musa palms. 
Um, and the Musa palms are like, they're like tall, obviously. And I kind of like the way it frames him with his, with his comfort skull. So um, I'm going to glue him to his comfort, to his base, excuse me. And then we're going to bloody up our comfort skull as one does. Yeah, I just love that uh, this is now canonically a comfort skull. Yeah, yeah, um, emotional support skull. <laughs> yeah. I need, guys, you're going to have to let me in with my emotional support skull. Because, I don't know, I need my emotional support skull. So here, here he goes. You know, we've been living in, in these uh, unprecedented times. I think everyone deserves some comfort. Here everyone deserves an emotional support skull. Okay, so there's the Musa palm, his emotional support palm. Okay, now I varnished him before we based him. Um, and this base has, this base is nice. It gives me a little bit of opportunity to, um, maybe I could put, like I ha you see I do like tufts. You guys have seen my Saim Han bases before. I could, I could put some more grass down here. I'm not sure that I'm going to. Um, let's, let's bloody up this emotional support skull. Now, one thing I will say is when I use blood, uh, I, I've not actually, I have to confess, I've never used blood for the blood god. Oh, okay. But um, when I use this one, and I, I see it's not staying, that's okay. Um, when I use this one, which is the Minotaur Ghost Tint, Fresh Blood, mm -hmm. I, um, I like to put it on a wet palette, and because I like to have a little bit of control over the consistency. And there's actually a couple of different ways to do this. I would like this skull to look like it has been just recently ripped out of its victim, like a second ago. Um, when I did my ogres, <clears throat> I kind of stumbled onto doing this first and then varnishing it so that you lose the, uh, the glossiness. And then after the varnish, you go back over in certain areas and the thing I like about when you that look is it kind of gives like this look that um, I'm trying to think how to say it. it gives this look that they've been like the ogres I did it on like the slab for the those are you you know the mall pot their their kind of giant like butcher shop that they have their little play set um, it gives this look that like they've been they've been butchering things there for a while right and so you get like this like baked in caked in layer of blood followed by this like fresh layer of blood. Um, but whereas here, I really wanted to pull kind of aggressively. Um, and I got to say, nobody, it's kind of their bread and butter. Nobody makes skulls like GW. Their skulls, like blood just pulls everywhere uh -huh. you want it to. But this one is quite good. Like, see right here? I don't know if you guys can see. No, you can't. Okay, it's a little out of focus, yeah. Okay, right, the eye socket right there. I'm getting like that nice pulling. Yep. Like, that's what I want. I'm, that's what I've come to expect from a GW skull. Um, <clears throat> this guy's got it, though, man. I'm into it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Like, like it, in your mind, he recently lost his old emotional support skull, desperately needs a new one, and just yanked it out of the, the first guy he saw. Pretty much. I think that that could be it, yeah. Um, okay. So... I'm gonna put a little more on because again, this has really just been yanked out of some 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 fellow. Have you ever done like blood drips and stuff? Um, a little bit of splatter like on my like on my ogres. Um, did like the toothbrush thing like on like their armor plates. They have like these stom stomach armor plates. Uh huh. Um. I'm a little bit nervous about putting any on his hand. I almost want his hand to somehow look clean, which doesn't make any sense. Okay. Oh man, no glam cam. I have to be my own glam cam today. Yeah, you just spit him in a circle. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I, uh, here he is. I, I will go back, you guys can see, if you guys can see where the soul stone is, imagine this model Okay, but imagine that right there being red. And by that right there, I mean like there it is. See it? Like, oh wait, I could use this stuff. Right? Mm. Yeah, let's just do it. Yeah. Well, you know what? It can be a placeholder. It's not, it's not quite the right color. 
clear red. Oh, maybe I'll use uh, the ink you. Oh. Is the ink you gave me the penetrating red cat? Is that gonna be? That's not gonna be glossy, huh? No. No. The clear red is though. Yeah. But the clear red is even darker than Blood for the Blood God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what you I, can I have do gloss is medium. use the ink and then. Just a gloss, gloss over. Varnish. Yeah, yeah. I, which I do have. I do have gloss, gloss varnish, and gloss medium here. Um, let's knock it out real quick. Ink, ink, ink. Ooh, here I'll use this contrast. I'm gonna regret this. I, I'm just like, like wildly improvising on this soul stone. No, I like it. It's kind of, it's kind of nice. I like it. It's new. <clears throat> uh, it's innovating. It's fresh. innovating. It's fresh. It's innovating. Okay, there's the soul stone. I'm gonna get in there. Still, still kind of dark, but okay. There we go. Actually, I like that. I like that more. That little dot of red goes a long way. Cool. Yeah, I like it. And, and with his hair being red as well, too, if you turn the model around, yeah, like yeah, you well, get more red from behind as well. Here we go. We're going to rotate. Manual glam cam. This is like my um, 70s early Wheel of Fortune music. <laughs> Comes the other way. Cool. I like it. It's All awesome. Right. Guys, I'm calling it. How long did that take? One model. Someone was asking. Yeah, you're, you're hour almost, 44. At, almost at two hours. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. I honestly love, I have to say, I honestly absolutely love being able to paint one single infantry model, like a character, like Karandras here. Um, <clears throat> a lot. Like, I love being able to sit down and paint an infantry model. Now, I did, I did um, have to assemble him. I made the base. Uh, I batch make my bases, as one does when they're uh, making bases for an army. And, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, it's one of my favorite things. It's just sit down and, and crank out, like, an infantry-sized character that you can just, like, go in and do the things. Like, I, I think... Um, I think I would do a little bit less on a normal striking scorpion, although maybe not, actually. I'd probably do about the same amount of work. I mean, this guy is a character, right? Like, he is supposed to be special. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I would agree. I would, I would do a little bit extra on my characters, which is usually what I start off with when I'm painting mm -hmm. an army, because that gives me my color scheme. Yeah. And then I can simplify from there. Um, and then that's easier for me to do. And instead of, like, because usually when I'm coming up with something... I'm trying to do everything. Right. And then, you know, trying to do everything on on everything is exhausting. Yep. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, wow, cool, I don't like this. Now all my army looks like this, yeah. Hey, Kat, I think we did it. Sweet. Um, let's chat about what's going on here at Hobby Titans and Titans Studio in general. Um, tomorrow's Thursday. Uh, there's going to be a game. As always, I'll actually be producing, so I'll be there. If you guys are there, I'll, I'll say hi to you. Um, if you say hi to me, that is. Um, <laughs> and I don't know who's playing or what they're playing. I, I didn't ask. But, um, you know, you, you guys know the deal. On Saturday, also a game. Still don't know, but I do know there's a guest from Dice Check, um, which will be fun. Um, I forget who's coming also there. Um, John... John, uh, John is in chat. John, if you know this information, please fill this in for me. Um, next week on Hobby Titans, we don't exactly know what we're doing yet, but Kat and I will be back. We are really committed to making sure that the computer is back and that you will see both of us here, like the old days, painting things in a normal way of two people painting and not hearing a ghost voice off camera. Um, other than that, keep an eye out for some videos coming out. Um, we have uh, we still think of the Fire Slayers out. We want to show you guys how we did that. Um, so some exciting stuff. Uh, I think that's it. Kat, anything you're, what are you working on this week, Kat? What are you painting? Uh, my Plague Angel. From Your Plague Angel. Caster. Competition that will, mode. That will be my answer anytime anyone asks, all yeah. the way up until the Depticon. Probably into a Depticon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, other than that, I do really want to get some cute hammer going. And, cute um, hammer is going to be fun. I have acquired 
some squigs. Um, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, those are about as hard to find as nulm oil nowadays. Really? Yeah, I had to uh, scour and uh, beg, um, and uh, I got a hold of a colossal squig, which is actually oh, fun. really cool. I do have to take it apart, but... Um, oh, not fun. I got a great deal on it, so, you know, okay. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you win some, you lose some, but I was I was very excited and very happy about it. And then you told me that it explodes into smaller squigs, and mm -hmm. so now I have to buy even more stuff. Yep, yep, that's how so. GW does it. <laughs> it. Look, if you're like, look, in game, in game, when I'm playing, I get free models to keep playing. Like, that, you're never gonna have to convince somebody to go buy more things. They're gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna buy and pay more things, of course, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, awesome, yeah, I'm excited for that. We might be doing that next week, not, maybe not, maybe not the colossal squig. No, no, but probably some like smaller squigs. Okay, and stuff. fun. Um, yeah. yeah, we might have an AOS week next week where we're doing a little bit of painting. Fun. Um, oh, and I should say, speaking of AOS, we are doing some AOS again on Monday. Um, I will over on Tabletop Titans, our sister channel. I will be playing Stormcast Eternals. I have kind of a cool list against Mel, uh, who will be playing the new I Don't Know the Deepkin. Um, and we've, her and I have played the practice game. Uh, it's a good game. Um, we think it's going to be lots of fun. So uh, check that out. Check us out here next week. Guys, as we like to say, be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves, and always be creating. See you guys.